Good. How are you? I am doing great. How are you? I'm really good. Thank God. Thank How's you so much for doing this for us. We're so grateful to have you. Our, our pleasure. We made it. We're finally doing something together. <laughs> I mean, after all of this time, you know, we've been doing so many crazy events, one after the next, after the next, two to three a week. It's just been nonstop, nonstop. My head's all over the place. <laughs> Thankfully, my dear friend, Rabbi Perlstein, uh, was able to sort of manage to get it all together. So, nice. uh, That's yeah. awesome. good, good to have a, a buddy like that. Absolutely. How's a friendly face doing in Florida? How are things doing out there? Baruch Hashem, good. Yeah, we're, uh, everybody's zooming all over the place, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. It's a new world order. So my, my parents have been here since uh, the beginning of March. Well, I heard they went to visit and they probably couldn't get out, right? They could, but they didn't want to. They're having so much fun over here. Yeah, Why <laughs> Exactly. My mom and my sister were, were with us since December, and they just went back to Buffalo two days ago. Wow, how nice. <laughs> uh, I think Rabbi Pearlstein is on. Rabbi Pearlstein, how are you? I don't think we can hear you. Take yourself off the mute. I'm, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank God. Thank God. Brian. Brian. Are you drinking Brian. Dr. Pepper? Zalman, I'm not a kaifer. I drink the real deal, Coca-Cola. <laughs> oh my gosh. God, I'm not I'm not Makala the Lashara that we're saying Lachaim on, on uh, soda. Uh, we gotta get better stuff than that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get Rabbi Pearl scene started. He'll pull out the bottle. Good. Now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. I'm expecting the the uh, the Heber to join in momentarily. Okay, great. I'm going to go off um, uh, talking right now. I still have another couple of things that I want to prepare before we get started. So I'm going to go off and go that way. Zalman, add, Zalman add, me, add me as a host. Okay, let me see how to do that. And don't be afraid, guys, to, uh, to cut us off if we're getting you know, long-winded answers. You know, you can move us on. That's my job. All right, good. Just jump right in there. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go off sound and I'll be back. Okay. I'm going to just make sure Richard has got, even though I sent him the information a whole bunch of times already. Ah, L'chaim. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to show you boys what a L'chaim is. Ah, all right. Okay, Hebra, here we go. Ah. You got this one? <laughs> That's Canadian stuff. Yeah. Cheers, let's drove you. A little L'chaim. Just get, get the party started, as they say. I prefer the stuff made in uh, Scotland. Aha, uh -huh, I gotcha. Baruch atah Adonai Elohim Ha'alam Shachol Niyabaro. Amen. Rabbi Perlstein, you you are in, in uh, Oregon. Yeah. Uh -huh. no, where? Salem. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. State capital. Aha. Uh -huh. So is, is your Chabad house like a like a community type of Chabad house? Community, but it's small. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Small town. Dr. Laz, Dr. Laz. Yes. What can I do to promote your books, your work, or if our community wants to support uh, you moving forward? Yeah, um, they can go to um, either one of the websites, um, or they can actually go right on Amazon and get um, the the book about the Crown Heights riots and, and Project Cure is is called Sharing Turf, and you can do that right on Amazon. Um, can we see if, I think we have a copy downstairs so I can show it to everyone. Oh, cool. Yeah, let me go see if I can grab it. Maybe in your parents' room? Yeah. 
Cool. And I, I may have, that might be in the email attachment that I sent you. There might be a picture of it. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey. Reverend Chandler, what up? How you doing? I see you, Paul. If you're up, but every time you're up, then you're up. Yeah? You got to um, unmute, Paul. Let's do it, Lars. Give me like five minutes and I'm right there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah. Good uh, evening. Th thank you for hosting Rabbi Chandler. Oh, wow. Sorry, I forgot. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. <laughs> what's up, T, what's up, T? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Yeah, man. Everything are crisp, man. Everything are good. Nice. Nice, my brother. Nice. Yeah. I was doing a little gardening. Did you get the picture I sent you? Uh, let me check. I didn't see it yet. It's so funny. I was doing some gardening before. I sent it to <laughs> yeah, man. I, I did some. I, I was doing, I'm, I'm doing some. I'm doing some gardening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man! Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> we all we all getting yeah. domesticated here, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, but it's, it's it's very therapeutic, um, you know. Yeah, it is. Especially, especially listen, especially when it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very therapeutic. I, I hear um, you. But I got, I got, I got um, sunflowers and a whole bunch of other stuff, you know? Uh, oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So where are we live from tonight? What? From Wyoming and Oregon. The West Coast nice. of Mount State, yep. <laughs> okay, yes, Portland, mm-hmm. Salem. Oh, Salem, Salem, Oregon. Oh, it's where? I'm sorry, brother. Salem, Salem. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Cool. Yeah, let me just try. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, How's your family, T? Everybody's good, man. Everybody's good. It's, it's funny because my 20-year-old son, Tristan, is working with my... 12-year-old son, Jay Sean, on a song about peace nice. that I have no influence on. Wow. Just well, in, 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 in another way. You know? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course, because yeah. Tristan is in Florida and uh -huh. Jay is in Boston. And they linked up. Tristan sent me a copy of his song, um, of his video. And um, I told him to link up with his brother, and he linked up with his brother, and they working on a song together. You know, they collabing together. I believe it's on Zoom or another platform, but they're collabing together on the song. Awesome. Shoot me one sec, T. You know, one sec, brother. Yeah. So just wanted to let you know, make sure you know that uh, if you want to get on here before you in the beginning. How are you doing, TJ? Hey Paul, what's going on? How are you? Wait, wait, we're I'm trying good. to find your There you go. How you doing, brother Paul? I'm good. I'm good. In three minutes. Okay. I'm blessed, man. I'm just hanging in there. Good. Uh, I don't I don't see you, so I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> oh well, I yeah, I don't know, brother. I I see uh, who, You see me though, right? Yeah, yeah. I did, I did, I did, definitely. How about DJ? Yep, I can see you now. It looks like now? TJ. Can I ask a quick question? Um, yeah, sure. Paul, hold on one We're, second, brother. Paul, okay, yep, you're, go, you're good now. You was froze for a second, Paul. But you're I'm good, good now. now? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Not a problem. All We're right, in Florida. I'm in Florida myself. Okay. TJ, you're like a quarter of the screen. That's all we see. Yeah, okay. Okay, let me explain that before we go on. 
I since lost all sight in my right eye. So okay. I'm basically when I'm looking like I'm looking all crazy and stuff, it's just I'm trying to focus and get Got the, it. Uh, a mental memory of what's going on. So Got yeah, it. that's what that's about. Cool. Yeah. Got it. Good Who evening, gentlemen. Who evening. is from Wyoming? Laz, who's from Wyoming? Oh, um, Rabbi Mendelssohn and his uh, his his wife and mishpacha. Wave hello to the Mendelssohn's. We're from Wyoming. Hi. I live in Fort Collins. Where are you in Wyoming? We're in Jackson Hole. Oh, so you're up a ways. Okay. Oh yeah. Beautiful. I just want to say hello. I am Malka. I am in Jackson Hole, but I'm from Philadelphia. So, uh, nice. but I'm right now in Jackson Hole. In this beautiful Good evening. Good evening. Oh, look at those mountains. We're going to be starting in one minute. We're going to be starting in one minute. Can we connect it to Facebook and everything else? Yeah. All right. Quiet on the set. <laughs> well, there's no wrong one. Well, no. uh, Paul, did you bring your uh, your hat? Is that what I saw you go get? I was going to get one of them. Then I was going to get my... Um, my, uh, you know, I have about six yarmulkes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wonder, wonder what happened to our Project Cure yarmulkes, you know? I know. Oh, we have to redo goodness. those. Definitely. Someone took mine years ago <clears throat> when, we were doing a sh when we were doing a show. What's it called? Uh, sure. We got we to get those going again, for real. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But I still have. Ta da. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ride him, cowboy. <laughs> no, nah, this is not cowboy. This is Lubavitch. Uh oh. <laughs> then you got to flip the brand. The Reverend Ron okay. Lindy is out. Everyone can please place themselves on mute. That would be great. So that way we can get started. Um, okay. Get started. For those of you who are joining us on Facebook, could you give us a shout out? Let us know that the Facebook is on and working, so we know that you're here with us. Uh, right where you're from, put in a comment of any sort. Just say hello, so we know that we're on. We want to be sure that everyone who's tuning in from Facebook can be seeing us live. Let me see what's going on on the Facebook side. Make sure all the technical stuff are working good. Please, we see a bunch of people on Facebook. Please just let us know that you're here and th that it's all working. Please post something on Facebook so we know that you're here with us. Okay. Welcome and thank you all so very much for joining us for today's Zoom presentation with Dr. Richard Green, Reverend Paul Chandler, and Dr. David Laz, titled Shearing Turf, Creating Unity. My name is Rabbi Zalman Mendelssohn, and I have the unique pleasure of serving as the co-director of the Chabad Jewish Center of Wyoming, together with my dear wife, Razi, here. It is wonderful to see familiar faces, and it is a great pleasure to welcome the many of you who are joining us for the very first time. Before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to our friends, the Chabad Rabbi in Rebetzin at the Chabad Center in Salem. Thank you, Rabbi Perlstein and Rabbi Sid Fruma for joining us for this event this evening. And welcome to our friends from the Beaver State, the capital of the Beaver State in Salem. Our mission at the Chabad Jewish Center is to share the beauty of Jewish tradition, history, education, wisdom, and Torah with the Jewish community of Wyoming and beyond. Most importantly, I say this all the time, now more than ever, coming together through Zoom allows for us to connect, to unite, to come together, and a time like this where there's so much division going on in the world. It is now important more than ever before that we come together for good causes, for healthy reasons, for joyous occasions, so thank you all so much for being here with us and thank you to our presenters. A few housekeeping items before we begin our presentation this evening. You gotta first join with video. Uh, if you can put yourself on mute, that would be great. We would love for you to all be on mute. 
Uh, there are three upcoming events. Please mark your calendars and share with your friends. Number one, this Sunday, June 21st at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we're hosting a Farbrengen, an evening of tribute commemorating the yard site of our dear Rebbe of blessed memory. Our guest speaker is Rabbi Shlomo Kunin, the one and only director of Chabad of California. On Thursday, July 2nd, we are hosting an event at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time titled Jewish Poetry with award-winning poets Yoshua November and David Kaplan. Finally, on Tuesday evening, June 23rd, at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, there will be an event that the Chabad in Salem is organizing titled One People, One Heart, a mega Jewish unity event celebrating the life and teachings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe of Blessed Memory, featuring phenomenal guest speakers such as Rabbi Beryl Lazar, the Chief Rabbi of Russia, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, former Chief Rabbi of the United Kingdom, a presentation on Shirley Grisholm, the first black woman elected to the U.S. Congress, Rabbi Adin Evan Yisrael Steinzaltz, and wounded heroes from the IDF. Please join us from that on Zoom at onepeopleoneheart.org. The schedule for this evening will begin with a 30-minute interview conducted by Rabbi Perlstein in Salem with our guests of honor, with our guest speakers. During the 30-minute interview, go to the chat box and send in every question you ever had about anything related to race relations, Jewish and black relations, anything that you can think of that might add some conversation and dialogue to this evening. We will, at the end of the 30 minute presentation, we will get back to those questions. And hopefully most of the questions will be productive type of questions where we're asking about what we can do in the future to build better relationships between all of God's children, because that's what we truly all are. We at Chabad believe in the nature that humanity as a whole is better off when we come together. So please do not ask any questions that are partisan. We will not answer questions that are partisan. If it mentions any elected, current elected leaders, we don't wanna hear about that at all. As you all know, today, many in the Jewish community are really struggling. The challenges that have hit us because of coronavirus is significant. People are calling us and asking for support, knocking down our doors, begging us for life support during this challenging time. We've been able to say yes to every request and have been delivering kosher food to people's homes, both Jewish and beyond, each and every day for the past couple of weeks. It is a great privilege to be able to help people, but please help us to continue being able to help people with your support we can continue to say yes and answer the call of duty. I would also like to mention, finally, that if you don't yet have this book, Sharing Turf by Dr. Laz, go to amazon.com and purchase it. It's a phenomenal book that explains the broader story of what life was like after the 1991 riots, a little bit before, a little bit after, and ways in which the Jewish and black communities were able to share turf and get along in a better way due to the great efforts of the three guests of honor that we have with us this evening. Amid escalating, uh, escalating tensions and violence between the black and Hasidic community in Crown Heights in 1991, this extraordinary trio brought together youth from both communities to help facilitate greater racial and religious harmony. They believe that in our world of divisiveness, the only solution is Project Cure. Dr. Richard Green is the director of Crown Heights Youth Collective, community activist selected by New York City's mayor's office to function as the liaison from the African American community to meet with the Lubavitch Hasidic community after the riots of 91. He is the recipient of numerous civic and national awards, he and his wife, Myra, live in Crown Heights and have two children. Dr. Green is featured in the Showtime movie, Crown Heights, which is based on this book. If you want the full story, get it. Reverend Paul Chandler, Assistant Director of the Jackie Robinson Center for Physical Culture, community activist, co-director of Project Cure, co-singer in the Racial Harmony Music Group, Dr. Laz and the Cure, He's an ordained minister, recipient of numerous civic and national awards in community relations and racial harmony. 
He and his wife, Gloria, have several children and currently live in Far Rockaway, New York. They are featured in the Showtime movie, Crown Heights. Project Shure's music group have opened for Al Green, the Manhattans, the Winnins, and played for the US Congress and for cities and universities across the entire globe. Dr. David Lazarson, he's the director of Project Cure and author of six books, including Sharing Turf, Race Relations After the Crown Heights Riots. The book was used to write the screenplay for the Crown Heights movie, which, which stars Howie Mandel as Dr. Laz. Imagine that, I think Dr. Laz looks a lot better. Dr. Laz has received the Teacher of the Year Award from two different public school systems, in Buffalo, New York in 1981, and in Broward County, the nation's sixth largest school district in 2007. In 2008, he was one of five educators to be inducted into the Teachers National Hall of Fame. He currently runs a music therapy program for the South Florida Public Schools. He and his wife, Gittel, who I have the pleasure of knowing both of them, have seven children and they live in Miami. We're actually neighbors. And I must say this before I introduce Rabbi Pearlstein to conduct this evening's uh, proceedings. Dr. Laz is the one who certified me as a lifeguard. Therefore, I'm no longer a lifeguard. I'm joking. Finally, it gives me great pleasure to invite my dear friend, Rabbi Pearlstein, to conduct this evening's uh, gathering. Rabbi Pearlstein and his wife, Fruma, serve as the spiritual leaders at Chabad of Salem. I'd like to call upon Rabbi Pearlstein to share greetings and to introduce our events program. Please join me in putting our hands together for our three guests of honor and Rabbi Pearlstein. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much, Rabbi Zalman and Rebitz and Razi Mendelssohn for putting this together, for working together and making this happen. This is on, on just another event that we're doing jointly, and it is an honor to do so. And thank you all for joining us today. I don't want too many more, um, too much more said before we get to the meat of tonight's event. Um, but uh, my wife, who's usually here, is a little exhausted because we just got off a 12, uh, 19 hour road trip from Phoenix where we were at a wedding the other night, a small family wedding. So excuse her absence. Hopefully I'll fill in as best as I can um, and we'll see how that goes. All right. I wanted to start actually with one of the video clips that uh, Dr. Laz sent me. So I'm gonna share my screen and we'll start off with this news clip about the work that incredible work that he's doing. Well, Dr. Laz and his band are making music with a mission. Check out those guys. They're having a lot of fun there. He's an educator and band leader that's been making a difference for decades. And now he's right here in South Florida. The band Dr. Laz and the Cure is on a mission teaching peace, love, and respect. I look upon our job as, as musicians as really sort of being uh, social activists and sort of lighting everybody's lamp who's out there. David Lazarson, AKA Dr. Laz, is an Orthodox Jew. Not exactly your typical rapper. See communication across the nation. Let's all sit down. It's a stereotype breaker. Maybe f at first, they, you know, they're just kind of, they're kind of dumbfounded, but then I think they start digging it. He formed the group in the 1990s after the race riots in Brooklyn, New York. A fatal car accident involving a child led to three nights of terror when racial tension exploded between Orthodox Jews and African Americans. Three people were killed in the violence, and Dr. Lass decided to take action. I felt that if we could play music together, then that's a huge visual statement to all the people who feel like, oh, these guys are enemies, these guys can't get along. Why don't we, why don't this we effort was so successful that Showtime made a movie featuring Howie Mandel as Dr. Lance. Representing Project Cure. Now, 20 years later, Dr. Laz and The Cure continue their mission of peace, performing here in South Florida. Saxophonist Kurt Wyndham says music is a universal language. My culture is a little bit different. How I deal with that, anytime you can learn something, I think that's a step in the right direction. 
a step in the right direction. Dr. Lass also teaches music to special needs children at a Broward County school, and he has created a special needs choir with youth of mixed abilities. You can see Dr. Lass and the Cure perform this Sunday afternoon on Lincoln Road in Miami Beach. Well, Doc All right. Um, so, Dr. Lass, with that introduction and uh, the other guests that we have, um, I don't think we have all of their names, but I'm sure throughout the evening we'll get to know them here shortly. Well, the work that you did, that, you're, that you were doing, surrounded around the 1991 riots. So getting right into the story of what went on, can you and whoever else you want to facilitate the conversation with uh, the guests share what was the environment back then that led to the 91 riots and what exactly took place? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm actually going to defer the question. I'll add a little bit to it, you know, from my perspective, but I'd like uh, Paul to take that uh, question because he uh, he's been lived in the community way before me and has a lot more experience with, you know, being actually in Crown Heights. We were in Crown Heights for 13 years and, um, and we're there when the riots broke out. But um, I'd like Paul to kind of like paint, paint the picture of, you know, what Crown Heights was like and perhaps even what led up, you know, to the riots, like why, why we even got into such a, uh, a negative state of affairs. So Paul, why don't you, um, why don't you jump in on that one? Well, thank you for having us, Rabbi. And um, it's really an honor and a privilege to uh, take part in this. The atmosphere, wow. Maybe let me just say this. We were actually one community, but we were two communities. And I think we like to express that we were almost like two ships out in the ocean in the dark and we were passing each other but not really communicating. It was quite different 55, 55 60 years ago when uh, the community was mixed with uh, Irish, Italians, Jewish and Black uh, and, a, and, and a few Hispanics. Uh, mainly the Jewish uh, children, there wasn't, you know, we didn't have 770. We had synagogues and we had churches. Um, and I, I always tell this part of it. On Wednesday, when we were in school back then, we would um, leave school and they would have, we would have religious instructions. I don't know if any of you remember that back in the days. And each of us would go all different ways. Many of the apartment buildings uh, were actually mixed to some extent um, in the in the fifties. Definitely in the fifties. Uh, prior to that, majority of the uh, Jewish uh, community in say uh, Crown Heights and the connecting community, which is Ocean Hill, Brownsville. That was, there were more Jewish people in Brownsville than in Crown Heights and in Ocean Hill. So when this incident took place of the young man getting killed uh, by a car accident, what happened is when that car went up on the sidewalk and killed this young man, the driver of the car was put in a, in a how, how, how do you say it last? Uh, Hatsala, Hatsala ambulance. Yeah. yeah, he said it. And that ambulance, uh, they took him off and everybody was saying, well, what about this child here? You know, and I think that gave the spark to this thing uh, that took place um, because a lot of unnecessary um, incidents took place. And as a result of that, we wind up losing another a uh, young man, um, uh, um, Yanko Rosenbaum. Uh, Yanko, yeah, Rosenbaum, yeah. So I don't know anything other than that gave fire to it. Now, but there was also these years 
like I see these incidents now where uh, young people are attacking young people, Jewish people. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't happening years ago. Um, not my time, and I, I'm pretty young. I, I've been around for 76 years, and uh, I didn't see it. Uh, we had more um, delicatessens that we all went to. We even had home on, I mean, just so much. There were so many Jewish things that we all participated in. And we also participated in playing games together. We played handball, we played stickball, we played baseball, we played basketball. We did, we, did, we went to school together. Later on, when the Orthodox, we, we called the Hasidic Orthodox Jewish people uh, uh, came in Brooklyn, came to Brown, to uh, Crown Heights, things changed in terms of that separation. Uh, and I think that the, that wasn't the Rebbe's intention. I, I understand the separation uh, spiritually, et cetera, but the fact that he moved into this community he knew that planting the seed there would help the Lubavitch community to grow in a real fertile place. And um, so I give him credit for coming there. Uh, he changed up the whole landscape there. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Paul. So um, around, around that time, the riots break out. There's a tragedy. The riots break out and it's uh, a very tense time. Share with us, um, Dr. Dr. Laz, again, I'll always address the questions to you simply because you know who to, who to pass it off to from there, <laughs> all right? I'll try um, to uh, but, but Yeah, but Paul, or I see TJ is here as well, right? TJ um, here, but, you yeah, here. So, yeah, if, so if there's something yeah. that's asked and you, and you want to be the first to, to speak about it, please, you know, it's uh, directed to, all, to all, all on the panel here. Um, so what, there, there was a lot of tension um, in the community, a lot of fear, um, a lot of anger. What, what, what was your initiative at that time? And, uh, and how did you get that started? Okay. Um, well, I, uh, coming from Buffalo, uh, I'm a public school boy, you know, didn't start going to yeshiva, keeping kosher until I was 23 and graduated from University of Buffalo. And um, I um, ended up um, coming to Crown Heights um, to actually to direct a special ed program in Manhattan, a place called the Manhattan Day School. And I, um, I had written a book about my experiences in Buffalo, looking the way I do, um, teaching at uh, a, a, an inner city public school called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community School. And to me, it was... Um, uh, fascinating experience because I found that, you know, all the stereotypes that I may have had before were just were ones in my own head right here and they didn't really hold water. And so my students, um, I, I mean, they, it was just a wild, awesome time. And I just kept a journal of what, what, you know, some of these funny wild stories, my students would give me a bike escort on the way home. Um, and then say, okay, you know, you're in, you're in white man territory, you'll be fine now. <laughs> and they, they would take my, my sitter up and pretend to read my sitter. And, and they'd come visit me on, on Shabbat. It was, it was a pretty wild, amazing, inspiring kind of, uh, you know, situation. And anyhow, um, then in Crown Heights, I, uh, I remember it was like, like day one of the riots. And I saw one of the community rabbis, Rabbi Heck. Uh, she had, was at a, a payphone um, on Albany, if you're familiar at all with Crown Heights. And if you remember what payphones are, or, you don't see too many of these anymore. Uh, he was, this is way before cell phones, you're talking 91. And um, I pulled over and I said, you know, Rabbi, I'm a public school boy. You know, I worked in, uh, in the public, I'm a product of the public schools. I worked in, in the public schools in Buffalo. If you need any help, you know, I'd be more than happy to help you out. So I was sort of uh, volunteered by him. Uh, the next day, I wrote into the uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe if I should do it. And the Rebbe told me the sooner the better. And, you know, he, he wished me a blessing and success. And um, at that point, uh, I, I went to meet uh, Richard Green, who may not be on tonight. He was in 
really well today. So uh, if he jumps on tonight at all, we, you know, we should probably hit him up for a few thoughts and some words to share and then let him go. But um, anyhow, I wish him, uh, you know, like a, a full speedy recovery. Uh, so I went to meet Richard. And for those of you who might know uh, West Side Story, the Sharks and the Jets, um, I felt I always use that as a descriptor. We, we had to meet at, uh, you know, the gym is neutral territory. Right, where are you going to meet Bernardo at the dance night at the gym? You know, the gym's neutral territory. And we met at the Brooklyn Children's Museum. We spent the first hour talking about the great groups, the music groups that we saw in the 60s. He basically was like, a, like meeting my long lost soul brother, this, you know, a hippie from the 60s like myself, other than the fact he was African American with long dreadlocks. And um, we decided that we had no agenda except to bring our youth together because we felt that those were the people who were really mainly on the streets, cursing each other out, throwing things, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the people involved in the, in the, you know, the rioting. And so we decided we we're gonna bring our youth together. Now, it, this was only two weeks after the riots. We, we had a meeting uh, at one of the public schools in, uh, in, in Crown Heights. And this is where I, I also met uh, Reverend Chandler for the first time. Um, I just share with you, that that meeting was hot and heavy. Um, they first Can I just say, sure. Yeah, I, I think we, we should definitely let you know that this meeting really was convened by uh, the mayor at that time, David right. Dinkins. He's the one that initiated, he's the one that contacted Richard, uh, uh, Laz and myself um, to actually try to, uh, convene this meeting. And since uh, the three of us, you know, we were involved in youth work and working with, with, with young people, I think I, at that time in my program, I might have had close to uh, 2,500. I had, I had, I think I had 27 schools back then. So I had a few thousand young people in my program. So I tried to bring as many from that area to come to that meeting and uh, Richard did likewise and so did, did Yaz and by word of mouth. So, but I'd like to let you know that we didn't call that meeting, even though we were out in the streets, you know, during the riots, but we, the actual meeting, it was actually initiated by Mayor Dinkins. Right, and we, um, I don't know if you, we took his, the, the mayor was the one who, I first heard that slogan of increase the peace. And when we heard that, we were like, ah, oh, that, that's going to be our motto of ITP, increase the peace. And, you know, there's a Talmudic expression. We say it in the, in the prayers every morning. Uh, you, you, you know, be a, a, a Talmud Chacham, a Talmudic scholar, marvim shalom ba'olam, you increase peace in the world. So uh, whenever I would get flack in Crown Heights from anybody, oh, what are you doing? What, you don't have to be apologetic. You know, what's going on? Why are you doing this? I would say, don't you want to be a, 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 a Talmudic scholar? And they'd be, what are you talking about? So it's just, just right in the davening, you know, Marvim Shalom Ba'olam, Tamidi Chachamim, the Tamid scholars increased peace in the world. So they would be like, okay. <laughs> and I just wanted to go in, into Paul just to describe that first meeting, just share a couple things with you. Um, the, the initial, we were all in a big circle. And the commissioner also from the mayor's office, he physically had to block the door from letting the media come in to this meeting because the media wanted to take pictures. They found out about it. And, uh, but the commissioner and, and we, all, the, we all discussed it beforehand. We didn't want it to be a photo op. You know, we want it to be real and not just take pictures and everybody goes home and okay, you know, you feel like you did something but you really did nothing. Uh, so we opened it up to questions and they asked questions like, What's with the beanie? What's with the beard? How come you guys are with beard? You know, have beards? What's with the white strings at your side? What's with the dreadlocks? What's with the ankh symbol that you wear? It was just questions about how we're dressed. And my first thing was, like Paul mentioned, this notion of we were like two community, we're two ships passing in the night. You know, like there's no interaction except you just pick each other up on the radar. And so here we were, some of us, you know, lived in the community. I'd been in the community maybe. I don't know, 10, 11 years at that point in time. Uh, you know, Paul had been there much longer, Richard as well. And we knew so little about each other. It was very mind boggling. And when that part was done, when they, then they started, all the stereotypes came out. 
how come you Jews control the the police? Uh, how come you're all wealthy? How come you, you know, you, you, you blacks always, you know, you hang out on the street corner, you're all, you know, dealer, drug dealers, all, all these stupid stereotypes came out. And they, they got a chance at that first meeting to see how those stereotypes did not hold water. They met uh, young Hasidic men who lived in red subsidized housing, who lived off food stamps, um, I shouldn't say lived off, but you know, who needed food stamps to, uh, for food, uh, who came from single parent homes. Um, and the Jewish young uh, participants, they got to meet uh, African-Americans who um, they had to leave early to study for a test. One had to leave early, had a, a violin recital the next day. And, um, you know, they, the Hasidic men sort of snickered at them like, oh, right. Yeah, like you study. Yeah, right. You play violin. And so they got to see how right from the very first meeting that they didn't hold water. The end of the meeting, after two hours, Reverend Chandler comes up to me and he says, uh, we broke up the meeting. He said, okay, guys, thanks for coming. I had no idea whether there's going to be a second meeting. Paul says to me, lads, we got to circle up and say a prayer. And I said to him, with all due respect, Reverend, let's wait and see if there's a next meeting. And he said to me, this is why you to the two rabbis here, you'll appreciate this attitude. You know, of action is the main thing. You know, as they say, from the outset, jump over it. Paul said to me, no. Nah, we got to do it now. So I said, okay. He says to me, do you know the 23rd Psalm? I said, yeah, I can say that one in Hebrew. I have one of the few ones that I know by heart. And so we called the guys back in. We circled up. This time, not just all the African-American young men on one side and the Hasidic men on the other. We're all mixed now and clasping hands now like this. Uh, so it was a very dramatic way to end that meeting. Uh, I thank uh, Paul for, uh, for that. And, Paul's not just my long lost soul brother. My, my mom has, has adopted him as my, uh, my, he's a, my brother from, an, I wouldn't say from another mother, but my mom adopted you already. So, <laughs> so, um, it, it, so Dr. Laz, you shared a few things that I, that I want to uh, focus in on. You, you, it seems like there was a focus on the youth um, with, the pro, with Project Cure that you, the, that you guys all started together. Um, are some of those youth with us today? Um, is there a story in particular? Is there an outcome about uh, the work that you did with the youth? Perhaps maybe share a little bit more in detail what you did with these youth and perhaps a uh, positive outcome that you saw affected it. Okay, did, did you want you direct them to me or to Paul? That, if, either one, go ahead. Uh, you could start. Paul, and take it away. They, they heard enough from me for a while. <laughs> well, um, the positive uh, came uh, as a result of them coming together at that first meeting and having a dialogue with each other. They started talking. Uh, actually, they did exactly what we're doing now. They had a conversation, and that opened up the door in terms of identity and knowing each other in a better way. We did an event a couple of weeks later at Mega Evers College in the gym. And uh, when I got there, Laz was already there. No, I think he might have been late, which happens a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, he I comes in and he says, I have a great song. I, I want to sing. I said, can, can I, it's all right if I sing. And I said, of course. He said, but I need you to sing it with me. You know, and I'm saying, well, I don't even know the song. I don't know the words. No, you can do it. This is it. Da, da, da. Well, the basketball game was the key thing because we had each group playing together. In other words, we divided them. We didn't separate them. So there were, there were, let's say, I mean, we had so many guys that wanted to play. So we mixed them up. And they were Jewish kids, they were black kids, African American, Caribbean kids. It was just such a great mix. And they played good ball. Now, Laz wanted to sing this song, so we did have an intermission and we sang this song together. And it went, it wasn't viral back then, you know, it went on on Reuters, et cetera. And before we knew it, we were, we were written up the next day in the Times and the, the Daily News, the Mirror, you know, et cetera, et cetera, the Amsterdam News, that this group 
and they have a rap group and blah, 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 you know, and that's what really propelled the whole movement and everybody wanted to get involved. So more youth came forward, more families uh, started asking questions and other organizations started asking us, what do you, what, how did you do this? How are you doing this? And we did exactly what we're doing now. We sat down and we shared, like you, 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 you're, you're sharing tonight with us. Um, it's like today, I, I just wanted some more information about where you guys live and what's happening there. So, you know, now I can get that information is there for me. I mean, now, Paul, I know about can... Wyoming from the Cowboys and Indians, right. you know, and the, the trails and all of that and the great um, uh, landscape that you have there, you know. Um, oh, now, now you have a good excuse to come to come visit. He wants you to go vacation. And if I come, I will definitely bring Laz with me. <laughs> and TJ and some Sahara and the rest of the group. Um, yeah, we, 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 we've been, I mean, several cities, several colleges, several Chabad. I mean, but the goodness of it, and I, I, I can't stop, you know, emphasizing that. And I think the whole, the whole country now, but now it's, it's around the world. People are looking at the demonstrations and the riots and the, the looting, but the, the kernel of it is people are really talking. People are having a conversation. You guys are not rioting, but you're having a conversation. And you're gonna have more conversations and more people go, and, and we begin to, to, to share, share our history, share our experiences, and share how do we begin to work together? Because we realize that working together is what we had to, we live together. That doesn't mean that I'm going to um, stop being a Christian. So that doesn't mean you're going to stop, you know, being a part, heavy, uh, in particularly last being a part of uh, the Chabad. Um, you know. Wait, did you just say, did you just say, Paul, working together is the way. Is the way to be. That's how we survive through. History. So, so do, do the myths. Because there's lots of fun. Fun. The peace will reign and the world, and the will, world be will be one. one. See, I haven't had like you, my brother. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So there, there's a, there, you guys mentioned the, 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 there's a movie called Crown Heights. And in the movie, there's a scene where Yuri takes a knife and puts it in his pocket. And um, uh, at a meeting or so, he wants to pull it out, puts it back. Can, can, can you describe that a little bit and maybe share? Did, did that happen? What was Rabbi, the effect? Yudi, Yudi's dead. Let Yudi describe it. So, but I just, Rabbi, I'm sorry to cut you off. If we can, because you were, we're talking about the youth. So I yeah. wanted um, also to direct that question to TJ. Yeah. TJ and Yudi were all 16 years old when they got involved with Project Cure, when, when the riots first happened. And it was a very courageous thing for them to do. You know, a lot of their peers were not into that. And a lot of their peers misunderstood you know, what, uh, what we were about, what we were doing. They felt um, we were compromising something. There was no, no compromising. It was like Paul said, we're having a conversation. We're here to share. We're here to learn about each other and see that we have so much more in common, you know, so much more unites us and divides us. But I would love to get TJ's response to that and Yudi's, and then you can segue into, you know, the sure. incident with Yudi, if that's okay. Sure, please. Yeah, so let's start. Let's start with uh, TJ and Yudi. If you guys want to share, we could go one at a time. Uh, uh, how you guys got involved? Yes, TJ, Listen, can you repeat the question? How how did you get involved with Project Cure, and what was your experience? Uh, okay, so I got involved with Project Cure. Um, my backstory is I I lived on the borderline of uh, Leftwich Gardens and Crown Heights. I worked with. Um, Dr. Richard Green with the Summer Youth Employment Program. And um, excuse me. And one of our sites was the mural. Um, I followed the, the events on the news and everything like that and through um, you know, neighborhood talk. And at the time, you know, I was I never knew there was an organization like that. So 
skip forward, we at the mural, and we're working on the mural, and I meet Yudi. So basically, me, Yudi and I are side by side working on the mural. And we're just talking. We're just basically general teenage conversation, because at the time we were both uh, 15, 16 years old. So we were just basically having a general conversation, you know, what, what kind of band you like, you like hip hop, um, different foods. I was doing things, to be honest with you, I was asking him that I felt comfortable asking him that I couldn't ask somebody older than him. You know, like I was asking him, what type of food do you like to eat? And do you really do this? And do you really don't do that? And stuff like that. I mean, just general curiosity. So he told me about labs and told me that, you know, he was with an organization that had a rabbi and a minister and they rap and they, and I had to stop him like a rap and rabbi for real. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it was, it was comical because you never heard nothing like that. So skip forward. Um, he says, yeah, you know, we're going to meet up with labs and see, if, you know, we're looking for a dancer and look, I'll talk to labs and see if, if, if you're fit. So what he did was, um, so I got in contact with Laz and uh, he gave me his card and I gave it to my mom. And one thing my mom, because one thing my mother does is she basically uh, interviews anybody that I want to, uh, for any sport of activity or extracurricular activity I want to get into, she, you know, definitely interviews the person. And they were on the phone for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour. So because of that, I knew that I was in, you know, and um, my first, my first uh, actual performance with the organ, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Yudi and I went to his house to practice and um, that was like the first time people have ever seen Black and Hasidic walking together, let alone teenagers. And um, it was um, eye opener for myself because I was like, okay, this is real, you know. And this is before the actual show. We just hung out together, went to Kingston Pizza, had some slices, just chilled, just hung out. So we get to the show. He didn't tell me that every major news network was going to be there, and it was my first time actually performing for lives for anybody. So long story short. We performed, I did well. Laz told me his itinerary, and we've been basically promoting peace ever since. I've been promoting peace with these guys ever since. And it's not just us getting together, doing a show, talking to people. We are family. You know, Yudi, Yudi, me and Yudi have grown to be brothers. You know, we've grown a brotherhood. You know, we got his wedding. Um, I'm down, I could call him. If he's down, he could call me. And there's nothing, this is genuine. You know what I mean? This is something genuine came out of something so negative. You know, something genuine came out of it. You know, so, but that's how I got involved. And um, I guess like, like, you know, like Paul and Lass said, I mean, we was all over the place. We were everywhere. And it was, it was amazing for a 16 year old coming from, you know, no, quote unquote, the hood. You know, you're not gonna, you know, that's an opportunity. That was an opportunity that was recalling for myself to learn more and experience and to see more than what I was just seeing in my neighborhood. And I got, I mean, I wouldn't give it up for the world. DJ, you know? that's DJ, that's that's inspiring. It's it's really good to hear, and and I want to hear from Yudi as well. Yeah, um, so, no, no, you're good. You're doing great. Thank you so much. Um, uh, first hand account is amazing. It reminds me of something that I that I was always raised with is that it's hard. It's not hard. It's almost impossible to hate that what you get to know. So if you actually spent the time to, to, to get to know the person beside you, to talk to talk to the one that may look or seem or live a little differently, before you know it, you could create a, a lifelong bond. So Yuri, Yuri, the other the other side of uh, TJ. In this, in this relationship, please share with us, from what I understand, Yuri, besides for just your experience and how you got involved, but there seemed to be a transformation that you went through as well that was highlighted um, in the movie. So if you want to share a bit about that, that'd be great. Absolutely, I'd love to. First of all, I want to thank you very much for bringing us out. I'm very grateful. Um, Yuri, so, man. Last man. 
Gazman. Gazman, I'll say. All right. So, um, sorry about that. <laughs> that's, our, that's our tradition, okay? <laughs> um, so, to, to answer your question, I was uh, raised in, in by, by my parents. Both my parents were, were hippies before they became from, uh, became religious. And uh, I was raised with uh, very open-minded parents that uh, we had people from every nationality as I was growing up coming to my table for dinner or for, you know, whatever else. So I didn't grow up uh, with the perspective of any, us and them. I grew up with everybody. We're in it together. Um, and then when me and my dad were attacked, it was 20 black youth attacked me and my dad in front of the house. Um, my dad was a, mil was a military strategist. And the first thing we did on the first night when this happened, is we, we mapped out the house. How can we defend the house? Where, where are the escape routes? How can we, uh, you know, whatever else. Like we figured out we can bleed the boiler and make two Molotov cocktails every three minutes. Like we really worked out how we can really defend and fight for the house. When me and my dad were attacked um, the second night, um, we, we, we I, I was out of the house. I met my father at 770. We walked home and, uh, my mom pulled me into the house. She's like, I'm not losing both of you at once. So I ran to the second floor where we stored all the glass bottles and I was on the, the, the porch on the second floor, lobbing bottles down as air support for my father it was down below. Somebody threw a bottle, uh, uh, took, broke a bottle and cut his inner leg five inches long, four inches deep. It wasn't one of the bottles I threw because I made sure all the bottles I threw broke. Um, and there was a black woman that's uh, a, a friend of the family. She lived across the street, catty corner to us, uh, in an apartment building on four stories up in the air. And she saw what was happening. She, she Her ex-husband, her husband passed away in the line of duty. Um, and her father was also an ex-cop. So she had a lot of pull in the police station. She got my father an ambulance and uh, whatever else. Long story short, I had a problem afterwards. I couldn't speak to her in person because of her skin color. I can always really speak to her uh, on the phone. And I would talk to her at night for hours, but when I'd see her on the street, I couldn't speak to her. It bothered me. Um, and when I heard about, and so I started carrying a weapon around then. The movie made it more when I got involved with the group. And when I, I heard about this group and I was like, wow, this would be great therapy because I did not like the person I was. And, uh, but I didn't want to take my weapon. so. Uh, I was carrying a nine inch screw, um, which is a great punching stick, pointy on one end, flat in the other, whatever. Um, the, so I, I bought myself an orange juice because I figured that's acidic. So if you needed to defend yourself, you can spray the, you can spray the orange juice in somebody's face. But at the same time, if I'm hot, I can drink it if it's all cool. So I, I didn't want to go with an actual weapon. Um, and that's really my thinking. The movie sort of took it in another direction, uh, which I found interesting. Um, but for me, it really was therapy. Uh, the first meeting I went to was probably the third meeting. It was in Oatara. Laz and Paul and, and Richard were, were being interviewed by, I think, channel PBS or something at the time. And all the youth were, were, were kicked out of the, 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 the basketball court. Uh, one of the things interesting about the, the thing, the, Laz did his music, uh, did his song, and then um, everybody played ball. And what was so amazing about that, that really touched me in the beginning was, that if you bumped into somebody while you were playing, you said, excuse me. I, never in my life have I ever, before or after, outside of cure, said, excuse me on a basketball court. Um, and everybody was sincere about it. I mean, it didn't matter if you, were, if you were a Jewish person bumping into a Jew or a black person bumping into a black person. You said, excuse me, I'm sorry. It was, it was so interesting. And then afterwards, while they were being interviewed, me and some of my friends were, that were there were, were sitting there and just sort of ragging on each other. All the Jewish kids and black kids were sitting together. And one, one, one kid was like, yo, your mother, mother, your mama's this. And, the other, and then the other one went back. And, and everybody's like, oh, man, you just said about your mama. And that was really weird. Like, everything just melted. And I was, I was milking my orange juice at that point of the night. I was just like, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm sweaty and I need a drink. But that was my personal experience on that. And I, later on, I, I, you know, I was very much involved. And I became a youth leader. And uh, I think it was in... Israeli consulate or something like that in, in, in or someplace or other it was that the music was going on and I, I've been dancing my whole life. My first form of expression was dance. It's actually, uh, I was reminded by Rabbi Burstyn, which was my teacher in first grade, that it, it uh, rallies with the Wababa Rebbe when he'd speak to the kids. I used to dance on the table and the Rebbe used to give me the hands. Um, so I've been dancing. Before I could even walk, I would dance. Um, and 
you know, that's really where I got into to dancing with the group. And then I had a partner and he, he couldn't be involved anymore. And I was looking for somebody else. And TJ happened to be, we worked on the mural and I, I just like, Hey, you want, you want to dance? I need, need a dance partner. And uh, yeah, it worked. It wasn't like, uh, you know, who knew what was going to be. It was just sort of, you know, I got to do what I got to do. And I don't know where it's going to come from, but I just got to make an effort. And that's really what, uh, what came out. It came out of a lifelong friend. And um, I'm so, I'm so grateful that uh, the creator guides us in the way he does that I got to meet this amazing person, which is extremely inspirational. Um, and uh you know, just very uplifting. You know, he's he's always been there for me since. I mean, we've been like literally, we've gone ice skating together, and people are like, well, why are you guys like hanging out together? Like, you know, in, in Prospect Park, you know, we walk around, and really, it had an impact on the people around us. I mean, so much so that um, that you know, people, I don't know, it was it was really, really. I just put it this way, it was really impactful. I'm just gonna leave it at that, and I'm very grateful for that experience. Yeah. Unity, yeah. unity, and unity, and uh, is 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 infectious. So yeah. You know, so thank you for sharing. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, uh, I'd like I mean, to say that, that, was, beauty that and beauty and and TJ, they weren't the only two young men that uh, that hooked up and became partners. Um, we had Ray Rice. We had a uh, we had a, a few other young men who were really tight before they came. I they came about a year or two years later. But the important part is that they kept the friendship that they developed, the, the unity. And so have the uh, other young men uh, that worked with us. And it, it grew. You gotta remember the movie is a movie. So they tried to somewhat do stuff that really, I mean, everything, the foundation of it, it's really us. Yeah. But we fought them not to do anything that would embarrass either communities. And uh, for instance, we didn't want them to use certain things to polarize what we had already uh, built. Yeah. So there were some differences that we had with the um, uh, producers uh, of the movie. I want to just share that, you know. Yeah, so if I, if I could just jump in for a second, I wanted to add that, um, yeah, the, as a result of our meetings, we, we, we moved from the meetings to, as Paul was describing, the, the joint basketball games to Kwanzaa Hanukkah celebrations to multicultural. The mural. Right, the art mural project, the, the music group. And so what was happening is while all this is going on, people who met at these events would see each other on the streets of Crown Heights and they would stop and talk to each other. And a lot of And they that, became friends, a lot of them. Yeah, and they yeah. became friends. So you, you, you had people going into the, you know, the kosher pizza shop, TJ and Yudi and other guys, and we used to meet in there in some of these places. And so I think it, it, changed, uh, it changed that culture of, of um, this unwritten rule, like we said before, of these two ships passing in the night you know, now there, were, there was just much more of this positive interaction. You began to see each other. And like you, were, you said before, when you get to know somebody, it's impossible to hate them. Well, you know, so people always say you should foster tolerance. And um, my attitude is what to, to tolerate someone is like the lowest level on the, on the rung. You know, the, right below that is I hate them and then I tolerate them. So, <laughs> what, you know, it's a much when you get to know someone, you get to appreciate them, you get to respect them, you get to learn about them and see that we're not all that different. So the, the vibe in Crown Heights slowly began to, to change. And so and a, a big part of it was these, you know, TJ and Yudi sort of leading the way and then other people just, you know, jumping in there and kind of following their role models. Yeah. So we're, 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 getting, we're getting close to some time and there's some good questions that were asked that I wanna to get to in the chat as well. But before we do that, I wanna bring it back a little bit to, you know, we're doing this now because, because of what's going on in our country. And, um, I, you know, the, the noise that goes on in the media and the attention that, that finally gets, goes on everywhere else is, is the noise. And then the dust settles and there's uh, communities that are divided 
There are people that are scared like we shared earlier. There are people that are not sure how to move forward. And you found a way to pave a path going forward by with dialogue, focus on the youth, focus on um, breaking stereotypes. For today's climate, everybody is living in their communities and there's protests and discussions everywhere. What is, what is your advice for us going forward? What should our next steps be? How do we start fostering relationships like you have been able to do with so many in a uh, divisive climate? Uh, can I, I um, direct this one to Nahaba? Uh, yeah, because I'd like to hear from Zahaba. She's uh, the keyboard player in our Project Here music band, traveled all over with us. Um, and you know she um i'd like to sh have her share this you know some thoughts with us and you know zahaba what do you see as perhaps something uh that's you know, what we've done and what's applicable to today's situation thank you okay so i've been with the band for 25 years i lived in crown heights in the 70s but i left in 78 um so my experience in crown heights at the time was very different uh, but subsequently got involved with Dr. Laz and met the rest of the group. And my feeling as it is now is that we've been working together for 25 years. Um, and one of the ways we are able to get the message out is just by showing up and then letting people see that you can communicate in many ways. You can have a dialogue, you can have a one-on-one, -on -one, you can have a musical interlude and you can see that people get involved in the music. They get involved in the fact that the message is very applicable. It could be applicable a hundred years ago. It's still as relevant as is today. I think going forward, along with having one-on-one -on -one dialogue and getting together in groups, when our group shows up, people come and they want to talk. I remember we did a, uh, we did a, a presentation at one of the day schools and Yuri and TJ were there and we they saw the, the kids it was high school they saw the film and then we did our show afterwards we met with the kids out on the on the grounds you know the lunch whatever these Jewish kids were following TJ like like he was like, they, they just wanted to have a one-on-one. -on -one. They wanted to talk to him. They wanted to have dialogue with him. So these kind of things become organic when you present yourself in a way that um, I'm approachable. I'm not like, you know, I, I'm a human like you're a human. It's, we're one, one, one human race created by one God. Let's break down the barriers and see that underneath the skin, no matter what the color is, we have souls and we are really one. And through the music and through the dialogue, this is how people come to re recognize that there's a way to unite. And that's really what I think God wants of us is to really unite. So we're doing our best that way. And I have to give uh, props to the leaders of this, between no, Dr. Laz you... and, and between uh, Reverend Paul and Richard Green and Yudi and TJ. I am humbled and honored to be involved in this group and it has well, changed my life. It has likewise. really changed my life as well. Likewise, likewise yeah. for you being with likewise. us. Thank you. Can I just say this, Rabbi? Um, the movie, you got to remember, the movie happened years later. And um, what the seeds that we created, like she just said, it was already, it was happening before the movie. It became more popular after the movie, but we had young people and adults doing more things. There were more black people invited to weddings, et cetera, and bar mitzvahs uh, in, in the Lubavitch community than ever before. You know, um, I was going to weddings every, you know, it was, <laughs> And, and it was amazing the different, different, and it wasn't just me, it was other, other black and Hispanic people. And even in the whispers in the community, wow, I mean, they do exactly what we do. They do, they like exactly what we like, you know? And it, you know, you said something earlier, someone said something about 
uh, you didn't want to bring any partisans, part, you said? Politics. Oh, I thought he said. Politics. Yeah, but he, I thought he said partisan politics or Part partisan. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just break that up. We don't want to bring in, we don't want to be any part of sin. <laughs> Do you get me, Rabbi? We yeah. want to make it, we want to make it kosher. We want to we make, want it, to make it a party. We want a party and not the sin. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's uh, different ways yeah, you can party. Uh, Rabbi, uh, also, yeah. I, want to, uh, I want to just get I, I want to hit up Yudi about uh, uh, this, this notion because Yudi has got his own thing as far as how to take this into the world today, which I've you know, just been hearing on, on the many Zooms we've been doing over the last several weeks. And uh, Yudi, if you could just share some of your thoughts about that too, okay? Sure, thank you. Um, I, I, you know, I feel that, uh, well, basically Rambam says when a person has an opportunity to meet another person, they should be the first to greet them. And what I find is that by talking to people, uh, the world according to, to, to Torah and to three major religions was created with speech. Speech is sound, sound is vibration. According to science, everything's a vibration. Speech needs somebody to listen to it for it to be valid. By validating it, you give a person, a, you, give a person you elevate a person because now they, they can exist comfortably because you listen to them. And so by having a conversation and listening to people, you actually elevating them and you're changing the space. And so really just having simple conversations, how are you? Continuously with, with every person you greet, you start conversations and start answering questions like, what is that? Can I just ask you a personal question? I don't mean to, to, be, to be rude or anything, but what's that thing on your head? Or why do you do this? And before you know it, you start getting into really deep conversations about other things. And they can be two words at a time. And before you know it, three years down the line, you've had very, very meaningful conversations less than a minute each time. And, before, and that is how we make real change. And when people feel you hear them, they're empowered. And when you empower a person, you take them out from the power of politics. Politics uses a divide and conquer mentality. And by elevating a person, you take them out of the space where they can be controlled by negativity. And so that's, that's really the answer I have is just start talking with people. Start opening yourself up to listening. In a conversation, it's not about thinking about what you're going to say next but hearing what the other person says. And then when you respond, it's you that's responding as opposed to when you're thinking about what the person's gonna say, then you can't even hear them. And if you have to be right, nobody wins. And that's really what we're seeing now. People are so angry, they don't wanna to listen to anybody else. And I'm watching on the, on the universal platform, the table of communication is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, on Facebook, I see messages like, if somebody posts something I disagree with, I'm going to delete it, or I'm going to delete that person. We don't, people don't want to hear anybody else anymore. We're so, we're so um, weaponized. I mean, there, I really feel that there's a war on, on us being done, psychological war done by us, on us to, to manipulate our thought process. Um, we're watching Corona right now. One of the most amazing things, I'm, 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 I'm blown away. We see that how every person's interconnected. A person in China could take a bite of a bat and we all feel it all over the world. Whoa, 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 and, and whoa, 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 whoa. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you, you, you wanna say something? No, go ahead. I mean, that's how connected we are. We're all connected in a sense where it doesn't matter what happens, you know, where you are, you affect everybody else. And even if it's in your bedroom and nobody sees it. And, that's a butterfly and, effect, the butterfly effect. Something well, that like happens here bigger. across the world. Absolutely. And, and we're all cells in a bigger person. The name Adam means man, both in singular, plural, past tense, future tense, masculine, feminine. We all part of this one being, Adam. And, and when we talk about the smallest molecule, most people talk about it as an atom. I know it's spelled different, but in Hebrew, we, it's about because the world was created with speech, it's about the way it sounds, not the way it's written. And we're all cells in a bigger body. We need each other. And if we and the fact, my father tells me, if two people think exactly the same, there's no need for one of us. We all need each other. And that's my, my thing. And please, I, I'm sorry for taking so long. I'm not the rabbi or the minister, but, you know, I hung out with them enough time that they had an impact. <laughs> yep, cred. <laughs> Thank you, so, so there was a question asked by, by Marilyn Johnston for the youth. So I guess that would be TJ and Yudi. 
Um, and I think yeah, Yudi already addressed part of it, but TJ, if you have anything you wanna share, please do. The question was like this, what next steps do you feel are needed to have an even deeper, richer connection between community members, especially in these difficult times? If anything is possible, what would you suggest? Well, first, first I would suggest that the community, the community leaders reach out to the most influential individual for the youth. Whoever the youth respects the most, that's who they target and that's who they reach out to because that's who the youth will listen to. Then come up with a game plan on how to communicate, understand, mutual respect, and it's a form of education. Um, once you get the youth hope to something that they understand and they're with and they can, they have somebody that they respect and they understand where the youth are coming from, they'll do pretty much anything. They'll, they, they will out of respect of that individual. I've seen it. I've seen it with the, 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 the elders of Project Cure. I've seen it with other associates that we work with. Okay, these cats, you could not, on, on the African American side, you could not talk to these, these brothers. But once somebody like Brother Green or Brother Chandler or Brother Rice came on the scene, there was a rap. And that's what it is. Okay? And have the youth just talk. Or don't. The adults be quiet and just have the youth talk and get whatever not whatever they don't understand, let them get it out. So they can leave that meeting with a better understanding of one another. And if it's not hard, it's simple. Thank you. Yeah. Um, TJ, that's really that's really beautiful. And it's and it's a concrete thing that can be done for communities all over the world. Um, we're, we're running a little bit out of time. I did, I did want to end actually with one of the songs that you shared um, on, a, on one of the YouTube clips, but um, uh, Dr. Laz or Paul, uh, 60 second closing that you would want to share with everybody. Go ahead, doctor, why don't you start? All right, I think we'll, uh, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll try to close it out. Um, I just want to add to what everybody has been saying and um, which I think uh, the, the main thing is this idea of having conversations. We have to stop seeing each other as, you know, the enemy on the other side. You know, I remember seeing a sign in one of these recent demonstrations, if you're not with us, you're against us. So in other words, it, you know, it has become this, you pardon the uh, expression, you know, a black and white issue. Uh, yes or no, in, out, um, and we have to realize that we're not enemies. It's not, you know, we're, we're on this spaceship planet Earth. This is our, our one home for all of us. We start plugging too many holes in the spaceship, we're all going down with it. So the way to, you know, the way to build it, like I don't think we did anything extraordinary. It was a grassroots sort of organic momentum we realized first we got to just sit and talk. And then it just sort of, it, it, it sort of took on its own, um, you know, energy and we went with it. And, you know, the youth were the ones who told us we want to play ball together. And Paul and I started doing music together. And then we brought TJ and Yuri. And then pretty soon, you know, it, it, it um, many, many people began to network with us. The majority of people are good, the vast, vast majority. And I would say in everybody giving a shot is, is you're gonna bring out the goodness in them. So we only had two basic principles in Project Cure that we decided, myself, Richard and Paul. And that was agree to disagree and respect the other person's opinion. And when the other person is speaking, like TJ just mentioned, we close our mouths and we just listen and you give them that opportunity to speak what's on their mind, even if you disagree, instead of jumping in, jumping down their throat, it, um, you know, it's not, sometimes not an easy thing. It's so, such not an easy thing 
that the Lubavitcher Rebbe had to tell somebody after the riots, um, he asked, how are you going to make the community better in sort of an antagonistic way? And the Rebbe told him, say hello to your neighbors. Five words, which you think are like so easy, and yet how many of us don't say hello to our neighbors? You know, there's this one we don't talk to, there's that one we don't talk to. This one is looking at me with hate in his eyeballs or whatever, but it could be it's again, it's all these stupid stereotypes in our head. And, um, and we'll be surprised, we'll be pleasantly surprised when we engage somebody else, you stop and say hello, and you listen to them. And I think we need to bring just these simple things back to our communities today, um, you know, to, you know, to, to swimming. And I, I'm going to close with this. I had a, uh, uh, there was a, a young man who was a member of the Nation of Islam. Now, if you would think if anybody was an opposite side, it would be me, a Hasidic guy from Crown Heights, and somebody from the Nation of Islam. And <laughs> he, we, we stopped, he, had, he said something to me on the street corner, and he said, I want, I want to uh, share some things with you. And he spoke for about 15, 20 minutes. I did not say one word. And when he was done, I said to him, are, are you done, my brother? Because I would like to you know, respond. And he said to me, before you respond, I want to give you a hug. This guy, a, a young man from the nation of Islam, gives me a hug on Empire Boulevard in Crown Heights. And I was like taken aback, like, you know, what's up? He says to me, you're the first, first white man that ever listened to me. You know, normally, he, and how hard was that? All I had to do was, like TJ said, you just be quiet and listen. So now I will be quiet and listen to my brother, Reverend Chandler. Close it out, Paul. <laughs> well, you were so on point, and so has everyone else uh, been on point. The listening thing is so important, but also, as Yudi said, um, the talking is important. Letting people express you know, what they're feeling, what they've experienced, even if we disagree with them. You know, um, I disagreed with Yudi saying something a little while ago and I started, almost tried to interrupt him, but I, I held it back. Yes, my brother. I learned some years ago um, as a, a teacher, I started teaching in the public schools, but then I, in 74, I had my first chance. I taught, uh, well, I taught at, at UMass first, and then I taught at, at Brooklyn College and Mega Evers College, the college in New Rochelle, and a few other. So, but I learned from my students. If I had 30 or 40 students in my class, I learned that they were really teaching me. Every one of them came with something it wasn't, and I wasn't banking information to them. I was getting it and giving it back to them. They were giving it me, giving it to me, and I was giving it to them. And they were giving it back. It was back and forth, and and I grew, and I see them now, and they're doing things that came out of those meetings, not the lecture. There were meetings, there were conversations, and there were experiments that we change things and it changed our way of looking at things. So we didn't realize that the key, when the mayor asked us to come together, when the Rebbe uh, uh, agreed and gave us his blessing, we didn't realize that it was just a really simple thing. And it went like this. See communication across the well, nation. Let's all sit down and have a conversation. You understanding. I listen to you. You listen to me. You can work things out in harmony. You oh. need ah, respect. Respect each other's feelings. Respect who you are. Respect each other's cultures and we'll all go far. Pa, mm -hmm. E for education. A point, a of, point elevation. of elevation. It keeps on going even after, even after graduation. Heck yeah. And that's the whole thing to it. You know, um, you know, People you already know, get to know them, but let them know who you are because you can give so much to them. We were put here to give. By us giving, we receive. Yes, Thank you again. Thank you for giving this tonight, giving us this opportunity. Thank Absolutely. you. Dr. Laz, thank you very much, Paul, TJ, Yuri, not only for your sharing, but for all the good work you're doing. 
May you continue to have much success and blessing in all that you do. Continue to affect the world in the most positive way. And God willing, we could all take a, a lesson from you and lead as well. If you haven't thank yet you. purchased... And uh, thank you, Zahava, as well, very, very much for those beautiful words that you shared as well. Please, everyone, go out and get yourself a copy of this book. You'll appreciate the depth of wisdom contained in these pages and the entertaining stories as only Dr. Laz knows how to share. Thank you all so very much for being here with us. Have Thank a wonderful you. night. Dr. Laz and the rest of you guys, if our community wants to stay in touch with you, to continue to learn about your work, to continue to stay in touch with you uh, and support your efforts, how do they keep in touch with you, Dr. Laz? Okay, the, uh, probably the easiest way is um, I, I can, I'll make sure you get all, all of our email addresses. And uh, we have a website, it's called projectcuretheworld.com. Um, so interesting, when I first came up with that website, um, my, uh, my better half gets us, she was like, whoa, I'm biting a big chunk of the apple here, you know, trying to cure the world. <laughs> and I was like, hey, we got to think big. And now we see like, with the current situation, you know, like Paul said, it's, it's gone, it's worldwide. And so it's these easy things we can do to cure the world. I will get you everybody's email addresses and you can be in touch and, uh, and, and be a, um, you know, not just a volunteer, but be a, uh, be a messenger for peace wherever you go, peace and goodwill. Thank you very much. I saw that Steve Liebler, uh, unmiked himself. Steve, did you have any final comments you wanted to share before we all close out? Steve, are you there? <laughs> Steve, can you hear me? Go ahead. Say your piece before we all close out. Uh, uh, can you uh, video? We don't see him. I just saw him. You did? <laughs> yeah. That anyway. was, there he is. <laughs> Steve, we don't well, see you. We just hear I don't you. see him now. Well, uh, uh, there's not much to see anyway, but uh, thank you all. Uh, you all, you all are right on, right on the note. We have to communicate and we have to respect others and listen to them and hear them. And, and then they will hear us and then walk down the same road together. God bless. Amen. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. God bless. Shalom. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful so night, you. one and all. Good night. Thank you, Dr. Mendelssohn, Robert Prostein, Mrs. Mendelssohn, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. Amen, amen, amen. In Wyoming, we, the red carpet is getting a little rusty and dusty. Come visit us in Wyoming. Right, we're looking forward. Yeah. Looking forward. We'll, we'll rock Wyoming for you. We would yeah. love that. We would absolutely yeah. love that. And, a good Shabbos, good Arab Shabbos. Shabbos. I just want to say it's, it's, I'm thrilled to see your, your, your Abba. I haven't, you know, what, you, you, you stole them from North Miami Beach. Come on, you got to share the wealth. <laughs> well, you've had him plenty of time. We're just getting him for four months. It's too little. We would love for him to stay longer, but he'll, he'll be back sometime in early July. Beautiful. Okay, looking forward. Looking shalom, forward. shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank good night, everybody. Good job. Chavez. Yeah, good night. Have a good Chavez. Bye-bye. Hey, Bruce. Good night. Good night, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Good night. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom my brother. Shabbat shalom. Nobody wants to leave. We're having such a great time. <laughs> if anyone wants to get on and ask questions and continue the conversation, please, unmic yourself and just talk. Ask yeah, like. that's a Fabrian. You can have a Fabrian yeah, here. Keep the conversation going. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to step away for just a bit, but please keep the conversation going. If there's anybody here that still wants to. Hey, Bruce, how are hey. you doing? I just had to say hello. Hi, you? How you doing, uh, This is, I'm Shira from Israel. Is there anybody else? In oh, this? We're you? here. Hi, Shira. Hi, Shira. Hi, Hi Shira. Hi, Shira. How are you? From I had to get up very early for this. <laughs> Thank you. I have to make a little sacrifice. It's uh, wow. it's five thirty in the morning here. Uh, where, 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 where in Israel? Israel? Where in Israel are you? In a Hasidic neighborhood called Kiryat Sons in Netanya. Uh, 
I'm on your mailing list. I have a nephew in uh, in Cheyenne. Beautiful. Noah Mantaka. His mother's my sister. So I follow all your activities, but the hours are not good for me, usually. What time is it in Israel now? Like 3 o'clock in the morning? 5.30. 530. No, oh, 5.30 in the morning. Wow. Uh, you guys, you start, we started at 4.30. Your program started at 4.30. Now it's already, now it's uh, already um, 5.30, quarter of six. Uh, sure, that's devotion now, to the cause. That's yeah. devotion. Now, how can I learn that? Uh, how can we get that poem that you said, that um, chant? Oh, what about, if you Working go together? On, um, yeah, you can go on YouTube and look up, um, look up the music group. Okay, it'll give it the name. Give Dr. it the name. Dr. Laz in the Cure or be under Project Cure. And we have we have a lot of songs over there. We have some music videos. Okay, look it up and enjoy. Project Cure. But you said also save the world or something. Um we Project said, Oh, oh that's another the project. Website. Right. Like the TTP, increase the peace. No, the web no, the website is Project Cure. Project the world. Cure. Right. Project Cure uh -huh. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Project Cure the World. Okay.